guys. Welcome back, Ox Tools. I'm Tom. So uh, this is Meatloaf 90. So we're getting close to uh, 100 Meatloaf episodes, which is pretty uh, pretty impressive, actually. Uh, <laughs> I didn't think that they would last this long. And every time I skip one, uh, I get a bunch of comments. What happened to my Meatloaf? So uh, anyway, here we are again. It's the mixed bag. Um, got some new tools to show you guys. Uh, a couple interesting things. A um, couple of products that I want to talk about. Uh, I just uh, discovered, or somebody turned me on to uh, um, a product that's similar to something that I've used, but I think is uh, better for uh, what we uh, would use this product for. And I'll show you that guy. Show you that in a minute. Um, uh, this is back the Bondo uh, uh, saga. Um, you know, don't you hate it when you when you thought you were wrong but you were right? So, uh, in fact, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna try these cards things. So there's might be a link right here if I did it right um, to a video that describes the the proper method for mixing the Bondo with glass, and it's from 3M. Okay, so I think I'm gonna trust those. I own stock in 3M. So uh, uh, they pay an excellent dividend, by the way. So uh, these stock guys, uh, go check that out. Anyway, uh, uh, apparently the instructions are right. It is a one and a quarter strip of hardener. And uh, so all the body guys out there that are putting a little dab in there and, and uh, doing it uh, are not mixing it per instructions, according to 3M. I'm not telling you how to do your job, but uh, um, a viewer turned me on to this video and it's, uh, <laughs> anyway, it's just funny, I think, that, that it's gone back and forth a few times. So, um, oh, and then we got a little project. Um, I, uh, I ran out of room, uh, storage room on, uh, uh, for my hacksaws uh, back near the vise. So we're gonna make a little holder that, uh, that holds those, uh, those hacksaws so I can grab them uh, quickly and efficiently. So uh, let's get cracking. All right, let's take a look at this stuff first here. We got two products here. Uh, this is the new one here. And uh, this is what I've been using before. Now what this is, this is this um, corro uh, corrosion inhibiting paper. So it's got a, uh, uh, a coating or some chemicals that are, that are part of the paper that help prevent rust. And what I've done with some of my uh, uh, you know, precision ground stuff that, uh, that I don't look at all the time. Uh, and then when you go look at it, it's got some corrosion on it, so you freak out. So I bought a roll of this, and then I, I just set the, uh, I set those components on this paper in the storage cabinet. Or I put it, I wrap them and put them back in their box or whatever. Um, it works pretty good. Uh, so far, so good. I've been using it for, I don't know, a couple years now, and it seems to be fine. And, um, uh, sometimes it's, you know, I don't know, you, it's reasonably convenient, but once you open this roll, it starts to degrade, you know, this stuff is, uh, is uh, off-gassing and coming off of this material, so, uh, I, you know, you start to wonder about, hey, is it still good, right? Um, but a friend of mine, a workmate, turned me on to these guys here, uh, and these are little cardboard squares that are impregnated with a very similar uh, corrosion-inhibiting chemical. Okay, a VCI, a volatile something something, I don't know what it is. And anyway, here's what they look like. So they're just little cardboard squares and this is kind of a convenient size. You can put these in a toolbox or a drawer or a, um, you, know, a uh, you know, a wood box with, uh, you know, some components in it or whatever, or a tool. And, um, you know, they're relatively cheap. I think this is 500 of them here, and it was 30 bucks or something like that. I can't quite remember. Uh, yeah, something like that. I got them off Amazon, so they're all over Amazon. You just got to find the right quantity, you know. I mean, this is, this is a, a bit of a supply of these things. So, uh, so I went around and salted them around in all the different drawers and stuff like that and put them with all the stuff, and uh, so we'll see how they work. But uh, it, it seems like a convenient shape, and... Uh, and uh, uh, easy to use. You can just spread them around. So all you guys out in the south back there uh, that, have to, that are fighting corrosion uh, constantly, uh, uh, you might want to try some of those or some of this paper out and uh, see if that helps you out. So uh, anyway, VCI chips. Okay, so this next one here, this is kind of an interesting thing. 
So now that I, I bought this Taft Pierce surface grinder, um, you know, I got uh, surface grinding on my brain, um, which is <laughs> what happens when you buy a new machine. Anyway, I've wanted some of these. Uh, um, this is a tool to be used on the surface grinder or on the permanent magnet. And some of you guys may be familiar with these, okay? Uh, some people call them permagrips. Um, and let's see, what's the other name for them? Um, yeah, permagrips is the, the one that I've, uh, that I've mostly heard. Um, anyway, what these are, they're, they're for holding uh, non-ferrous materials to permanent magnets, okay? And uh, they're very clever. Um, they're not cheap. And, uh, you know, I... Uh, I was uh, duking it out with somebody on uh, on eBay for these. Uh, these appeal to me because they're kind of small and narrow. And uh, some of the other uh, Brown and Sharp makes these, and a few other people make them. Uh, they're they're a little bit bigger. And um, so this particular set, uh, um, like I said, I was duking it out. And if that was a viewer that I was fighting over these with, I apologize. Uh, um, you know, and uh, <laughs> anyway, I wanted them so. These were a hundred bucks, which is cheap for these. These go for three or four hundred dollars, I think, uh, kind of normally. Um, how they work is, you see this groove here. They they're thin to just a few thousandths thick there, so they they have they're flexible, okay. And the way you use them is, you see, it's got a little crook in it now, right? All right. Um, you can hold something like a piece of brass down to. A permanent magnet so we're going to put that against the fence we're going to shove that up against there all right and then we're going to put this and you can see that it's up i hope you can see that i'm going to push that up against there and i'm going to push that whole mess together nice and snug and then turn the magnet on okay then what i'm going to do is i'm going to push these down okay so that they're sucked flat to the magnet now well, it's, it's actually biting pretty good. That's probably about as good as a piece of steel would be um, on there, so we could grind that. Let me, let me reset that. Let's try that again. So make sure that one's up. Make sure that one's up. Okay, push these together, down. I'm sitting down. Okay, push that one down. Push that one down. Okay, there we go. So you can see that's pretty good. Now, you know, I could bop that down, but I'm pretty sure it's down pretty good right now. So we would grind that, we could flip it over and grind it again. Um, and then you'll watch, this will pop up when I release the magnet. Bink, you see that? Okay, so they have opposing teeth. You know, one set going one way, one set going another. Um, and uh, they're kind of handy for grinding uh, uh, non-ferrous materials. Um, um, we've used them for grinding um, uh, G10 uh, phenolic or epoxy composites and stuff like that to hold them down to the surface grinder and, uh, and do that. Anyway, uh, permagrips. These are made by Metric Systems. Um, this does not look like a, uh, a stock box to me. I think uh, some uh, machinist guy uh, uh, attempted some woodwork here. So, uh, <laughs> you know, this is, this is often what happens with, when machinists do woodwork, right? They get the mill out and uh, they go to town. So, uh, but anyway, uh, uh, permagrips and uh, kind of neat. And uh, once again, I apologize to the guy I was bidding against. And, uh, <laughs> on eBay. Okay, so this next one, let me drag it over. This next one is a Craigslist find. Like I said, I've been, uh, I've had uh, surface grinding on the brain here, and uh, so I've been uh, keeping track on my Craigslist, um, you know, for surface grinding accessories that I don't have, and uh, this popped up. I, you know, I wasn't really hunting for one of these, but uh, uh, it came up at a, at a good price. So this is a Suburban tool. Uh, probably uh, Don Bailey may have even touched this one. Who knows? Um, and it's their MC66S1. So it's six inches by six inches. 
about 150 millimeters square, and it's a single a single sign plate here with a permanent magnet. Um, let me loosen this up, and you guys can get a look at this thing here, like so. And this is just a little bumper here to to keep uh, keep it from clacking together. There's the roll, and uh, the suburban ones are kind of cool because they have a reduced diameter here, so you can you can do small angles. So that's a known offset between there and there, so you can uh, recalculate based on um, that smaller diameter. So you, um, if you need to set up a really small angle, right, you can use uh, gauge blocks only go down so small, right, unless you get a really special set that's thin. Um, but here you can set up very small angles uh, using the small section of those rolls. So, excuse me. Anyway, this one's in great shape. Um, these um, retail for $1,500 or $1,600, something like that, brand new, depending on where you buy it from. Um, I got this one for $600. Um, so, you know, not dirt cheap, but uh, certainly... Uh, um, yeah, well, you know, <laughs> less than half a retail, which is kind of my benchmark, uh, you know, for something. So this is a useful piece um, on the surface grinder, you know, for grinding angled stuff. Um, it is missing something. It's missing, now I don't know if they come with two, two fences, uh, a back fence and a side fence, or if they just come with one. So I'm probably just going to get a second one just for... Uh, um, just because, and um, and it's also missing one of these little brackets right here on this side, but um, I don't think that's a big deal. I'll call Suburban and see if uh, um, they sell that separately or how I get another one of those. And if they don't, then I can just get one laser cut with my next load of uh, laser cutting stuff. So anyway, a um, um, guy named Sal on um, Craigslist. Thanks, Sal. Uh, thanks for uh, pleasure doing business with you. And um, so here's another thing that comes out of Craigslist once in a while. He says, "Oh, you like that kind of stuff, huh?" And I go, "Oh yeah, sure." He goes, "Oh well, I got more." And uh, so of course, you know, you pay attention when you hear that. And I said, "Okay, well, you know, when you drag it out, uh, shoot me some pictures, and uh, you know, and uh, we can talk, or you know, I'll see what you got." So uh, so we'll see what happens with old Sal there, and uh, uh, what he. Uh, <laughs> What he comes back with. So anyway, suburban side plate, um, surface grinding accessory. Okay, so here's my problem. You know, this is a couple of steps away from my bench vise, and I have a bunch of hacksaws here. Um, um, stuff away from me. Um, and. It, Anyway, the reason I have so many hacksaws is one is, you know, I find them at the flea market for a couple of bucks. So I, uh, uh, what I do is I, on this one I have a 32 tooth blade and on this one I have a 24 tooth blade and on this one I have a 14 tooth. So now when I go between, you know, thin sheet metal and, uh, and solid rods or whatever, I don't have to screw around and swap blades so I'm actually pretty efficient with uh, these little saws here. Now, uh, you know, Bruce Whit Whitman uh, showed a, a hacksaw. He was hacksawing something the other day and he was using the, uh, it's got some side holes. Oops, actually that one's missing the pins there. <laughs> um, it's using the side holes. And I noticed that uh, he had kind of an old school hacksaw. So Bruce, um, you know, I'm gonna send you one of these, um, these high tension models here. So this has a, uh, it has a pivot here and a screw, okay, and you can hear that, okay, and this stiff frame here, you can get a lot of tension out of this, and these are the best hacksaw frames that you can get. They have a screw, you know, this you know, has a variation there, there's a different type. Um, these are the Lennox, I kind of like the Lennox myself. Um, what is this one here? This is a Greenlee here, probably made by Sandvik because it says Sweden on it. Um, Anyway, uh, any of these with this pivot and screw arrangement and the heavy frame, uh, you can get a lot of tension out of and uh, they just rock. Um, so Bruce, uh, I'm going to find one of these for you and I'm going to send it down to Oz for you and you can, uh, you can test drive it. So you can see my problem here. Is when I moved in here, some uh, Yahoo had shot one of these uh, 
uh, nails in the wall here, and this has became my de facto uh, place to hang up uh, the hacksaw. Well, I recently added a third one here, and now this is it's not working for me. So what I want to do, uh, to do one here and here. What I want to do is make a make a little uh, holder. that holds the, this was my idea to hold it in this attitude like that, right? Um, and then I can just grab whichever one I want and uh, uh, easily, or just pick them off, and uh, so it just supports them a little better. So uh, we're gonna bend up a little thing and, uh, and mount it to the wall here, and that's the project. So let's, uh, let's get cracking. All right, so I've already kind of worked out the lengths here. We're gonna cut off a piece that's about, uh, 20 and a half. All right. Let me, uh, I'm going to deburr that and then we'll go over to the bender. Okay, so we're over here at the bender. Uh, we're going to make a series of bends here. Um, I did a uh, I did a little test one, but I didn't like it. So this is the shape we're going to bend up. It's kind of a three-dimensional uh, shape there. Um, I decided I wanted it, uh, uh, this to be wider uh, to catch the frames in a better way. So that's kind of what we're going to do here. So what we'll do is we'll start out, and I'm just going to reference this end here for my measurements here. Okay. And in this case, I'm going to work... So to, to keep it all symmetrical, uh, you know, when you're bending rod like this, there's two ways you can work. You can work off of the ends, you can work in from the end, this way, and then come this way, or you can work from one end and you bend, 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 and the, the material's coming out this way. Um, that's a little trickier to do um, because there's some take up in the bend here. Um, and so in situations like this, a lot of times if it's not fussy, um, or you know, not, not that it's not fussy, you can do fussy work with it, um, but if there's some symmetry to your, your object, a lot of times it's more efficient to work uh, from the ends in. Uh, you can't always do that depending on the geometry because you get, you get crossed up with all the, uh, the legs sticking around. So uh, sometimes you have to go off of, the, uh, off of one end. But in this case, we're gonna work from the ends. Enough said. Okay, so we're going to start there. Okay, just going to hold it till I catch it. All right, we're going to put a 90 in here. Now this is 5 16 cold roll rod here. Okay, and I'm just eyeballing the 90 there. That looks pretty good. Okay, and I'm going to come up. Okay, so this is my first, uh, my first uh, plane change there. And then I'm going to gauge again. And I'm just gauging to the outside. Going for two inches there. Then I want to look down at it, make sure I'm, uh, I'm not making a, a whoop de doo in it there. In fact, I'm going to lean it back just a teeny bit. Okay. Now you see the materials pulling up there. That's what you got to, you know, when you work from one end, that's what you got to watch out for. Okay, that looks pretty good. All right, so there's half of it there. Okay, so now here's the, <laughs> here's the mine squack. Um, you know, which, where do you start, right? Okay, so inside, inside. So we're going to be like that, okay? All right. So you can get, like I said, these three dimensional bends, you can get kind of screwed up pretty easily. So, all right, so I'm going to set it. Then I'm looking at this other one here. Can you see that other one? Yeah, you can see the other one. Make sure that it's level, right? And you can even put a level on there if you want. All right, let's go this way. Go for our 90. There's our 90. Actually, it went a little bit past. Okay. All right. Okay. Pay attention, Mr. Wizard. <laughs> Pay attention, Mr. Wizard. Dweezel, how does that go? I don't even remember how that goes, so. Uh, Time for this one to come home. All right, so there's two inches there. 
Okay, and I think you guys can see, you can see it at this point. This is gonna do it. It's right, pretty good. Oh, I can't set it there, but uh, all right, that looks pretty good. So let's, uh, you know what? I got a little tweaking to do there. All right, that looks pretty good. Let's go see how the hacksaw sit on that. All right, so I think what we're gonna do. Clamp this in, Mr. Vice. It looks kind of level. Clamp the snot out of it. Okay. All right. General idea there. Are these screws sticking out can interfere a little bit, but uh, yeah, 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 it's better than my stinking nail over there. But uh, now you know one one negative of this is uh, you still gotta you still gotta pull them all off to get to the one you want. Man, the only way you're going to get out of that is, uh, maybe that's what we do. Make one that holds, uh, holds them kind of separate. Oh, it's three separate hooks. Yeah, well, maybe I, that's what I ought to do. Maybe I ought to do three separate hooks. Then I can, uh, um, you can just grab the one you want. You know what? I might change my tune here. Let me think about that for a minute and let's come back. All right, so, you know, we, we were fiddling around with this, but uh, I've uh, changed my tune here a little bit. I don't like that idea anymore. Uh, that was just my first idea. I did notice, uh, I was looking at these, and uh, amazingly, you know, like I said, this was a different brand here. They have, they all appear to have a very common feature here, all right? This opening, it's kind of amazing that a different brand, uh, you know, maybe these guys copy these guys or vice versa, I don't know, or maybe it's all made in the same damn factory, who knows? But this is, this appears to be common and the handle angle is, appears to be kind of exact, right? So what I'm thinking is I'm gonna, instead of a, hook like that, I think what I'm going to do is have a peg, I'm going to have a peg, and this will, this does two things for me, it'll allow me to hang them individually here, all right, let's see, let's adjust that angle a little bit like so, so that it hangs vertical, all right, so now each one will hang individually, and so I don't have to take them all off to get at the, uh, the, the blade uh, the tooth count that I that I want, right? And I can just drop one on there, and it hangs real nice. So let's see here. Let's put a little mark. Let's test my uh, theory. So you know, I got two and a half inches of uh, of engagement there. That seems pretty stable. Let's try the uh, odd 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 one here, and that hangs pretty good. And then it's you know it's within an eighth of an inch of uh, of hanging right. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Is I'm just going to cut some pegs here. Um, and leave one or two extras just in case I, uh, I want to add uh, uh, another one or something like that. So that's something that a lot of people miss a, miss a trick on is uh, you know leaving room for expansion for in in fixtures and storage and things like that. So uh, don't just make it for what you have currently. Um, if you foresee maybe getting another one or whatever, um, you know leave a little bit of room for expansion. So let's. Uh, this is now turned into a, you know, a dog simple thing here. Um, we're gonna cut off four pegs here, round the ends a little bit, and weld them on at an angle. So, uh, you know, we're talking simple Simon now. So let's cut some pegs.
right, here's a little trick for you. So, you know, those pegs want to be at an angle, right? So I kind of measured that angle and it's about 15 degrees. So what I want to do is <clears throat> grab the pin here. So I want to belt sand that angle on the, on the end of those pins, right? Um, but I find it helpful if I put some guidelines and I just put them, oops, I just put them right on the uh, the platen of the uh, of the uh, of the belt sander, and these are just visual. And I'm going to extend those a little bit, and I'm going to go the other direction too. Let's see, 10, 15 degrees. It just happens to be 15 degrees. Um, uh, th these are just kind of a visual cue long straight edge there as to uh, so I can hold it at the right angle without thinking about it too much right and instead of guessing at the angle and it actually works pretty well um, you know for stuff like this where you just want to get it pretty close but you're actually gonna you know when you go to weld it you're gonna probably measure that angle so uh, this keeps you from filling big gaps and stuff like that all right so we got these random lines on here, not so random. And then, where did it? so when I'm belt sanding, all I got to do is just kind of eyeball that angle, and I can, and I can, it's got a big burr on it, and I can move my way down to a different place in the belt, and not, uh, you know, wear a big spot in the belt. So let's uh, let's go ahead and do one with that method. Put my uh, hearing protection on. So I worked out some spacing on this uh, um, for those hacksaw frames. It's about two and a half inches between each one. So I've laid out those spots. I'm going to go ahead and center punch them since the uh, uh, these rods are going to go over those little center punch marks and and hide them. Uh, oops, one more. Two, three, four. I got three hacksaws, but I'm putting four pegs on that, and then those are uh, going to be mounting holes there uh, to mount this to the wall. Now, unfortunately, this is hot rolled, Ugh. Um, so um, you know we're just going to have to deal with some um, little sparkler show there a little bit. Uh, you know, maybe I'll uh, I'll sand that off real quick uh, just to make it uh, weld a little smoother. But let's get ready to weld those on. All right, we're going to take some of this mill scale off here. Um, a viewer was asking me about these uh, these clean and strip or rapid strip discs that I like. Um, you know, I've had this one on here for a while, and it's done a bit of work, and it hardly shows any signs of wear. So this is this Norton Blaze rapid strip, and these it's a four and a half with a five eighths eleven, uh, so it's got a hub on it already. Uh, these things rock. And it's great for doing stuff like this where you just want to clean a little crud off of an area there. Let me uh, come around the tripod here. So, you know, we're just going to clean uh, the area. Hey, I might as well keep going, right? Alright, so gives me a nice uh, smooth welding surface there. I still got my center, oh it's warm now. Uh, I'm going to drill these holes and then we'll do some welding. some 
tacks now do a little straightening get them all evened up and get some more tacks and we'll weld them up screw on it. Put that on there. Of course. Mm -hmm. I'll hold it up. Seen these? These are these blue screws. Oops. These are these blue uh, masonry screws. I just love these things. Um, they work really good. <laughs> if you get the hole drilled correctly, let me see. I don't want to. This concrete's a little bumpy here. Get tension right. So, I think I'll just short, I'll uh, put the stopper up a little higher and then I'll hang in a better place. But let's see how she works. Oh, yeah. Sweet! Where's the other one? Where's the other one? Where's the other one? Oh, there it is. I like it. Alright, I don't like that though. See, then I can see the blades right there, 32 tooth, pow. You know, here's, here's the next huge problem. I need to paint it. Ah! I hate painting. Okay, well, I'll spray bomb it and then uh, remount it and then uh, call it quits. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. I'm not going to show the painting. <laughs>